Yes, well... My name's Tia. Yes, <laughs> and I'm Veronica Green. And, um, and we were on uh, RuPaul's Drag Race UK Season 2. Did anybody watch it? So oh. a few people did watch the show. <laughs> with, wow. With your parents, I'm sure. Yeah, with yeah. your parents, hopefully. I, we would like to take some questions and answer some of the things that you'd like to know. So um, where shall we begin? Do you prefer to be called he or she? So for me... As I'm Veronica right now, um, it would be she. But in my everyday life, um, I, I, my, my boy name is Kevin. And yeah, I know, it's funny, isn't it? Um, and I go by he. Um, but generally day to day, I don't, generally day to day, I don't mind. But when I'm in drag, it's always she. Yeah. Mm. And I very similar. If I'm in drag, then I, I do prefer she. Um, but when I'm sort of living my life day to day, he, him, they, them, whichever you prefer, all of the pronouns. That's actually a really good question to ask. People should make sure that they're addressing people in the right way. So thank you very much for asking yes, that. Yes, thank you so much. What's your sexuality? I'm an LGBT uh, person, and I'm the G on the LGBT, I am uh, gay. And yeah, so me and my, I'm not even wearing my, <gasps> I'm not wearing my engagement ring, I'm engaged. Um, yeah, yeah, please. Oh, oh, oh. I, I, I should, I should have worn it, yeah, we're engaged. I'm engaged to tea or coffee. Um, no, I'm engaged um, to a, a lovely gentleman called Steve. Um, and I think LGBT rights and, uh, and things like that are so, so important because if you, go, if you go back 15 years ago, 17, well, however many years ago it was when I was your age, um, it was not possible for me and my fiance to, to be together and to get married because it was illegal. That's why history is really important because you can look back and there are lots of things that happen that we all sort of learn from and it's sort of no pressure, but it's kind of up to all of you to keep things progressing and make sure that everyone just has lovely, gorgeous, happy lives. That's all we want. That's all we want. Yeah. How did you make your voice sound like a girl? Oh, OK. For you. So <laughs> this is my natural voice. When I was in high school and I, this voice just happened, um, I, got, I got bullied for it a lot because I was different um, and because I've got quite a feminine features and, uh, and feminine voice um, and I'm very small, um, people often mistook me for a girl. So my nickname by the bullies in school was boy girl or girl boy. They were very, very mean and very, very horrible. But as I've grown older, I've realized that what makes me unique and what makes me different to other people is actually one of my biggest strengths. And now all of my closest friends celebrate um, everything that is different and, and unique about me. And my voice is one of those things. Oh, if I'd heard anyone calling you that in the playground, I'd have told a teacher. Yeah. Yeah. That's the cool thing to do. That is the cool thing to do, yeah. yeah. You wouldn't fight them. No, that's no. not the right no, thing to at do all. at Just... all. Just tell a teacher or a relevant member of staff. Oh, yeah. yes. Yeah, they put a stop to it. Yeah. Do you wear makeup and wigs all the time? So, for me, doing, doing drag is very much fun and performance, and it's my job, but it's not what I do day to day to, to, for, for a living. Um, so, yeah, when I, when I wake up in the morning, I, I just have scraggly hair, my normal scraggly hair, no makeup on. Um, and, then, and then when I go to perform on a stage um, or meet beautiful people like yourselves, I, uh, I, I, I put the drag on. Yeah, a drag is a bit like our school uniform. So you sort of like put it on for, for the work and for like coming to places like this. And then other times I wear very comfortable tracksuit bottoms and look 
dreadful. <laughs> yes. What made you want to become a drag queen? Well, I um, saw a musical uh, in Edinburgh where one of the characters was a drag queen, and I really wanted to play that part, but um, they didn't have any auditions for that show, so I just decided to do the show myself and cast myself in it. Um, because I'm very confident like that. Um, so I just put myself in a show in drag and then it just carries on from there. And it's become my whole job, full time, all the time. Yeah, for me it was, well, it was seeing other people doing drag inspired me to do it. I saw a film called Tu Wong Fu, uh, which had uh, RuPaul as, uh, a, she played a part in it. And then I saw RuPaul's Drag Race um, about, 11 years ago now on the TV whilst I was performing in a different stage show and I was just amazed by it. I could not believe that uh, that people could do this for a job and for fun and for work. So that's why I, and that's why I was inspired to, to do it. And then I, it turned out I was pretty good at it. So um, I was like, yeah, I, I enjoy this. I, I really love it. So I'm gonna do this. Also, you yeah. watched, you saw RuPaul's Drag Race for the first time before anyone here was born. This is true. Yeah. I'm not calling you old. Oh my gosh. <clears throat> I, am, I am calling you old, that's what I'm saying. Well, <laughs> I've got nothing to say to that. <laughs> <laughs> Who was your drag role model? Um, I take a lot of inspiration, not necessarily from drag queens, but from uh, the various members of Little Mix. That's, that's the main inspiration for me. What about you? Oh, gosh. My biggest inspiration for drag is my sister. My real-life sister is called Veronica, and I stole her name. <laughs> but I, it was a way to celebrate my sister because my sister is my biggest inspiration in life. I love her with all of my heart, and my way to show my appreciation of her is to is to celebrate her every day. So every time I get into drag, um, she's she's everything that I'm thinking of. Yeah. Oh, that's cute. Yeah. We love that. On RuPaul's Drag Race, if you had like enemies, then what was it like to have like an enemy? I personally didn't have any enemies, but there were people who um, perhaps didn't Gen like me or didn't get on with me or weren't very nice to me um, and they said some quite nasty things during my time there but I didn't mind because I knew it wasn't true um, so I had Veronica supporting me and all, all my friends who are very very kind and very lovely um, so when individuals um, who I won't name <laughs> were unkind or said nasty things on and off camera um, I was able to just sort of smile and get on with it because yeah. who cares if someone's telling you something that's mean and you know that it's not true then why bother listening to them it's not worth your time carry on live your life have exactly. a biscuit do you know what yeah. I mean? you can spend a long time being upset about how other people treat you but just as Tia says if you know it's just mean things that they're saying and it's not true um, you can you can not let that affect you rise above, rise above. Mm. Like a cool summer breeze, just let it wash over you. It's their problem, not yours. Can I put you on the spot to sing something for Mia? Well, only if Mia's going to sing it with me. I mean, do you know the words to UK, hun? Yeah, I know the first part. <gasps> well, that's perfect, because Tia knows everything else. <laughs> <laughs> well, so do you. I'll join in. Okay. I'll be back backing vocals. Well, you you take the verse and we'll we'll join in with the chorus. Okay. How's that? Um, I don't know the chorus. Well, we'll do, we'll the, do chorus. the chorus. Okay. I ready? know the first bit. Okay. okay. Let's go for it then. Are you ready? Take it away. Ding dang dong, sing sang song, UK hum. UK hum. <gasps> oh my god, that was, that was perfect all by itself. Oh, I love that. That was a you, solo. You didn't even need us. That was so amazing. Exactly. Thank you very much for having us here today. Yeah, thank it's you so much. It's been lovely. Much. What, are we going back to lessons now? 